So our next lab is on buffers. So big picture, you're going to be making four buffer solutions and asking the question, how do those resist changes in pH? That's the purpose of a buffer, to resist changes in pH. So we're going to talk first about how and why that happens and what you need to have in order to make a buffer. And then we'll talk about specifically what you do in this lab. So at its core, a buffer contains a weak acid and its conjugate base. And this is key, that they must be a matched pair. You have to have a specific weak acid and its own conjugate base. You also could have a weak base and its conjugate acid, but you have to have a conjugate acid base pair. It has to be a matched set, okay? Why are buffers able to resist change in pH? Well, I want you to think about this in terms of sort of an army analogy. When you have a buffer, the weak acid component in your buffer is going to be able to battle against any extra base or hydroxide that's added. Thinking about this another way, if you were just to add hydroxide to water, that would dramatically increase the pH because you'd be increasing the hydroxide concentration. So if we have some way of neutralizing any hydroxide that's been added, that's going to minimize that change in pH. And here's how that happens. Again, a buffer contains a weak acid and its conjugate base. So if there is a battle with hydroxide that's added, the weak acid that's in that solution can react with the hydroxide, neutralize it by converting it to water, and then generating some of that acid army into the base army. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna deplete some of our acid army, and we're going to essentially convert those, arm, those acid soldiers into base soldiers. And because we've now created more of a base army than an acid army, our pH is gonna increase just a little bit, okay, but not the same amount as if we had added hydroxide to pure water. Going a little bit more quickly now, the purpose of having that conjugate base in our army is it is going to be able to handle a battle with acid that's added. And here's the chemistry for how that happens. If you add protons to solution, if you added protons to water, it would dramatically decrease the pH, make it more acidic because you're increasing the H plus concentration. But if you have a base army in solution, these base soldiers, they will be able to react with and neutralize that H plus. They're going to convert it into that weak acid. So again, we are going to be slightly decreasing the size of our base army. We're going to be slightly increasing the size of our acid army. And so the pH will actually decrease slightly because we've slightly increased the size of our acid army. But importantly, because we have neutralized the offending base or acid invaders, we don't see the same magnitude of pH change that we would if we had been adding that acid or base to water. Okay, so what are you actually doing then in lab to evaluate this? You are going to be making four kinds of a buffer, okay? So there's going to be four buffer systems that you're making, and you're going to essentially test how well they handle this battle compared to water when there's no army. Spoiler alert, what's going to happen is you're going to see significant changes in the pH of a water solution when you either add acid or base directly. But when we create these buffers, we are going to see a blunted or a diminished change in pH. And we're going to evaluate how four different kinds of buffers that we could make will sort of uh, play out in this scenario. So here's the first buffer system that you're going to make. Okay, and just to kind of orient you with these four pictures that you're gonna see, you're gonna see these little um, rectangles, if you will. These represent the sizes of your weak acid or conjugate base armies. And we're gonna have two different kinds of buffers because the weak acid that we're using is different for them. So for this first one, this is a phosphate buffer. Okay, so this phosphate uh, is going H, uh, H2PO4 minus is going to be our weak acid, and then its conjugate base is going to be the conjugate base for this buffer system. So we're going to refer to this first buffer as a phosphate system large army. We've added sufficient amounts of both our weak acid and our conjugate base to try to handle and mitigate any changes in pH that we'd have from either acid or base that we'd add. So that's the first buffer system. Here's the second one. And as we go through these, see if you can identify why we've chosen to create this second buffer system. What is it allowing us to look at? 
So the second buffer system, we're using small amounts of the weak acid and the conjugate base. So this is going to create a small army. Heads up, let's think about predicting how well this system is going to be able to handle changes in pH from a battle with acid or base. We've got a smaller army, so very quickly acid or base could overwhelm this. We might see that we could handle a little bit of acid or base that's added the same way this guy would, but as soon as we overwhelm and use up all of our soldiers, we're really not going to be able to effectively battle uh, without a significant change in pH. So before I move on and tell you about the second two kinds of a buffer uh, that we're going to be making, I want to introduce you, <clears throat> introduce you to an important equation. This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. There's four variables in this equation, pH, pKa, which is again a property of the molecule, and then the concentrations of our conjugate base and weak acid. So if we know the buffer system that we're using, that pKa is a constant, and if we know the concentrations of conjugate base and weak acid that we have, we can calculate what the pH of that solution should be. See if this makes sense right now. If the sizes of our army are equal, that is, the concentration of conjugate base and weak acid are the same, this term is equal to 1. If this term is equal to 1, then the log of 1 goes to 0, and the pH of any buffer system where the concentration of the weak acid and the conjugate base are equal is going to be equal to the pKa of that acid system. Okay, so what this means is both of these should have the same calculated pH because the ratio of our armies are the same, the same amount of weak acid and conjugate base. So both of these will have the same pH value. How they're going to be different in having a smaller army, we're not going to be able to sustain a lengthy battle because we're going to run out of soldiers fairly quickly. Okay? Now let's see what the next two buffers are. And by changing color here, I hope you see that what we're changing is not the size of our army. We still have a large army. We're changing the identity of that army. Okay, and by changing the identity, that means we're changing who the weak acid is. That means we're changing what that pKa is. And because this term in a large army or small army where we have equal concentrations of our conjugate base and our weak acid, the pH is going to be equal to pKa. So heads up, the predicted or calculated pH of this buffer system should be different because the pKa is different. The identity of those weak acid and conjugate base soldiers are different. Okay. Third buffer that we're going to make is what I'm going to call a lopsided army. We're going to stay with this acetate system, but unlike these first three where we had equal concentrations of our weak acid and our conjugate base, now we've got a lopsided army. So from a calculation standpoint, this one is not going to have equal concentrations of our conjugate base and weak acid, so this will not be one. This term is going to contribute to the pH of the solution. Now, we can predict this by saying there's a bigger army presence that's an acid than a base, so our pH should actually be lower in this second system than in this system, okay? Uh, but we can go through and calculate that. From a mathematical standpoint, this should make sense that when we have a larger number in our denominator versus our numerator, we are going to have the log of something less than 1. The log of something less than 1 is going to be negative, and that means that that pKa is going to be decreased from what it was in buffer number 3. So hopefully that makes sense about why we've asked you to make these four different buffer systems and compare it to how water is able to sort of have a battle with acid or base. So here's how you're going to actually set up and run this in the lab. Okay, You are going to be making four different buffers. Each buffer when you make them is essentially going to be the same. It's going to be a certain mass of your weak acid, a certain mass of your conjugate base, and 100 milliliters of water. I should say if you are using acetic acid, that's actually a solution. So you're going to have to measure out a volume of that. All of these other species are going to be sodium salts of these uh, species. 
So your weak acid here as H2PO4 minus is going to be um, NaH2PO4 there. And then we're going to have Na2HPO4 as our conjugate base. So again, this is a weak acid conjugate base pair for buffers 1 and 2. This is a weak acid conjugate base pair for buffers 3 and 4. Okay, so up to you if you want to make all your buffers at once and then go through all the testing or if you want to make them one at a time. But here is then what you're going to do with these four different buffers that you make. The first thing you want to do is run through that calculation and predict what you think the pH should be. You're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for that. Since you know the masses of each of these that you're measuring out, right, you can use the molecular weight to convert to moles. As a hint, we've actually already done this for you in lab because we tell you the amount to weigh out, but we also tell you how many moles that is. Okay? You know the volume that you have here so you can get the concentration and those become these concentrations that you put in here. You're then going to use uh, our instrument to measure pH. It's a pH probe. Okay? We're going to use that same little computer system that we used when we did our spectroscopic measurements, but rather than plugging in a little spectrophotometer that holds a cuvette, you actually are just going to have a probe. It almost looks like a giant pencil. You're going to take that probe out of the storage sort of bottle that it's in and you literally just rinse it off and you're going to dip it in your solutions. So you're going to dip that probe into this solution. You're going to see what the pH is and you're going to compare it to what you calculated that it should be. And then you're going to do four different battles with this buffer. Here's how you're going to do this. You're going to split this 100 milliliters approximately evenly into two 50 milliliter sort of aliquots or amounts. Okay, you're going to do a battle with acid with one of those 50 milliliter uh, flasks or uh, beakers, and then you're going to do a base battle with the other. So here's how that works. You're basically going to take that 50 milliliters and you're going to add 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, and then you're going to measure the pH after you've done that. Now, don't, you don't have to sit here and wait for too long. You can just sort of put your probe in, let it sit for maybe 5 or 10 seconds, see what that number is, and record it. Okay. In that same sort of beaker, you're going to do another wave of your battle. You're going to add now double the time uh, amount of acid that you added the first time you did that battle. So the total is going to end up being 30 milliliters of hydrochloric acid that you're, that you're adding. But after you do that second battle, you're going to measure the pH. Now, prediction, right? We should imagine that if we're doing a, a battle with an acid, we should see that the pH will go down. Now, depending on how good the buffer is, is going to determine how much it goes down, okay? Flip side, do the same thing with a base battle, right? That other 50 milliliter portion, you're going to then be doing the same thing with adding 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, seeing how the pH changes. Again, adding sodium hydroxide, that's a base, we should see an increase in the pH. And then you're going to add double that amount, do an even bigger battle, and you're going to ask, how that buffer system is able to best sort of control changes in pH. Now, we're not saying that buffers don't allow pH changes. We're saying that they buffer or mitigate the magnitude of that change. So what you're doing sort of with this qualitative lab here is you're going to be asking the question, based on these predictions that we have, how well do these systems sort of buffer changes in pH when we have either additional acid or additional base? Okay, the post lab questions are going to ask you to think about those again and see if your observations match what your uh, experimental data was showing you. And I will highlight when you're being asked to answer these post lab questions, I don't want you to say that I know this handled uh, the, the, the change in buffer or, or uh, the battle better because the magnitude of the pH change was smaller. That's your observation. I want you to think about why. So, for example, if we are looking at the difference between these two buffers, right, we should predict that this one is not going to be able to handle the battle as well because it's a smaller army. So when you answer the question comparing buffers one and two, don't say that you know that one was better because the pH did not change as much. That's your observation. Tell me why, right? The reason why is we have a smaller army. We have a smaller concentration of weak acid and conjugate base, so it's less able to do that battle, right? It's less able to do this battle with either acid or base and neutralize that invading species. Okay, so that is our lab on buffers.